Hi, everybody. Hi, welcome to tonight's live. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit flustered and everything. Um, nothing was going right for me when I first started this. So I'm hoping that you can all see me, but um, please, you know, let me know if there's any problems with my technology um, or if I'm missing any comments. Um, so for those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Natalie from Nat's Crafty Life and um, I'm one of the admins on Cricut for Australians and this is our Thursday Night Live that we now do live in YouTube. So welcome. Um, I've kind of got a bit of a different setup tonight and I can very, I can only just see some of the comments. So um, if I look like I'm squinting, there's a reason for that. Um, but yes. Welcome and hello to everybody. So I can see here there's a whole bunch of people. Paul's there. Say hi, Paul. Um, there's so many people here. Liz, Wendy, Kerry, Su Suzette, Sharon. The list goes on. My eyes are going to go cross-eyed trying to see anything. So what I do ask, if possible, if you've got a question that you want me to like make sure I see, um, just put it in caps lock just so that, you know, it's all in capitals. It'll make it easier for these good old eyes here. You know, I've had a birthday since my last live. So, you know, um, <laughs> I'm not getting any younger. Um, oh, yeah, technology, it's just been a pretty terrible day and, oh, just nothing wanted to go right for me today. So um, hopefully, you know, this project doesn't go, you know, in the loo and um, it actually turns out how I'm envisioning it. But you guys get to um, watch me kind of create my magic as it comes because I've never made this project before. Oh, thanks, Patty. It was a week ago, but thank you. <laughs> um, actually, it was more than a week ago now, but yeah. Um, hi, Joe. Hi, Janine. Alrighty. So uh, what we're actually making today is um, I'm going to be working with the uh, what's that stuff called the design space project now this project has caught my eye for a while um, and really I was super excited to sort of make this but because we don't really celebrate Halloween here and I know like I'm not very spooky right now so I was gonna like do a Halloween tea but like everything time gets away from you uh, yeah this is my magic I'm sprinkling my magical glitter everywhere <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I was really inspired by a, um, uh, a project that I found in Design Space and you guys can all create this project as well as, um, as me. So like, I just wanted to sort of talk through, I've already done the pre-cutting, but I wanted to talk through about resizing things and all of that kind of stuff. And then this project in particular, it calls for different supplies to what we actually really have available here in Australia. So Sharon is saying, why should you be different than us? mine go pear-shaped regularly <laughs> um look I mean I shouldn't be different to anybody else like I mean my life you know can be turned upside down in a heartbeat um just like anybody else so yeah look I'm I'm going to be real with everybody um I'm not going to be an edited person so we're going to see how real I can be on this camera tonight <laughs> everyone's getting very excited for Halloween by the looks of it I think Every year, Halloween just kind of gets a little bit big, bigger and better in Australia. And, you know, my husband gets a little bit more negative and not wanting to do it every year. But anyway, I'm going to jump over into design space first because I feel like that's the important part that I want to show you guys. And that's um, really how to find this project and what changes I needed to make to it. So I'm just going to jump over into design space, which is just your generic design space. Um, Patty loves being real or us being real. So obviously inside design space, you can look up a whole lot of different things. I'm actually just going to search Halloween dome is what it's called. You can uh, look up Halloween cloche, but if you look up Halloween dome, it is actually the first one that comes up. Um, and so when I click on this project, obviously I'm not that skilled that I can make it exactly as they have it here. So I'm not even going to pretend that I'm going to have mine looking as good as this one. However, there are some changes that I had to make and I had to really work with what we have here because, um, you know, it says here that we work with chipboard with this. 
well, I don't have any chipboard available to work with. Um, don't know how it would work in lockdown. Halloween, yeah, that'll be very odd. Everyone will go on their one hour walk within five kilometers and that's about it, I reckon. Or is it two hour walk now? Um, so it does talk about needing to use chipboard, but what I've done is I've actually um, decided that I would just do two layers of white cardstock just instead. Um, I just really didn't want to play around with the knife blade on this project because I also want you guys to know that you can make this project completely, even though it says it's got chipboard, you can make this project 100% on the Joy and on the Air 2. So I don't want you guys to feel um, disheartened if, you know, you look at this project and it's, you know, essentially a maker tool project. Hey Karen, how are you? <laughs> So um, there's a couple of things here. I mean, I couldn't find a lot of things in my local stores. I do live regionally, so I kind of tried to find things that I either had around the house or that were just, you know, simple to pick up. So I do have some wire. I do have a glass dome. However, I don't have a, um, I don't have like an IKEA or anywhere that have those really nice big glass domes avail available. So I've only got a smallish one from um, Kmart. So I'm, you know, and I'll show you it a little bit in a moment. So I kind of was working with a smaller scale. So I did have to size my stuff down. Hi, Kelly, you're not too late at all. Um, and then, you know, I didn't have any styrofoam because I hadn't built any um, flat pack furniture in a while. So um, <laughs> there's normally always some flat pack around my place. Um, however, I did use some of that um, floristry kind of foam that they have at Spotlight. I just had some hanging around here and I couldn't find any of the right colored moss that I liked, but you know, we'll work with it. And I, oh, I also didn't have a stamp pad, but you know, we're going to make this work. Um, and of course the masking tape and knife blade and strong grip mat is all because of the um, chipboard here. So we're just going to sort of go into customize of this project because I think that's the most important thing to sort of look at here. Now, when it loads, Alrighty, so I'm just going to zoom out so you can see a little bit more. So when it loads, you can kind of see here that the width of the house, hang on, I'll just ungroup that, that the width of the house is roughly 5.5 inches, so about five and a half inches. Now my cloche on its own, without having to consider the fact um, that I have to fit it inside the dome, my cloche is only about four and a half inches on the inside. So I definitely had to size down my design and I think what I've ended up going for was a, a neat, I think three and a half inches on my design. So to do that, what I did simply was I highlighted everything and I aligned them all to the center so that I could see them all sort of central in one place. And then I simply came up to the size and I changed it to three and a half inches and I kept everything else relevant. And because I'm changing the size of this one, it actually makes it a little bit not worthwhile doing in chipboard, be, or yeah, in the chipboard, because essentially the chipboard would um, start to shred because it would get too small to use. So had I done it in the original size of the project, then chipboard would definitely be a good option. Um, but because I'm making it smaller, um, it gets to that point where it just won't be suitable, I guess, for this size. So on top of that, what I also did was now I can move my guys out a little bit so you can see them all. So I know that these guys here are all my colored pieces, but what I did over here is I also made all of these guys here one color. Now I shouldn't have probably used white as my base. I should have probably used something brown, but I didn't have any brown cardstock or any beige. So I just created them and made them white. And then just to get a little bit extra, I just duplicated the house, the tree, and the cat because they have to stand up on their own just so that I would have an extra piece. Now, I didn't duplicate the ghosts because essentially I'm going to have two layers and I felt like because they have to sit up in the air that I didn't want them to get too heavy. So this is what I've simply done and I've cut them all out onto the standard um, cardstock from Kmart or American Crafts or Kaiser Crafts. So it's just sort of a medium weight cardstock. 
Hi Gail. Alrighty, so once I was done, I simply just go through the Make It screen. I moved it all around so that it was sort of easy to space save. So I, I hate wasting space where, you know, I can easily put extra bits and pieces in. I might even put the big one there. So I definitely just sat around here and just space saved it, made it so that it would cut, you know, evenly and not jaggers anywhere. So, you know, you only need about four inches of the cardstock to do it at this size. And then from here, I simply just went ahead and cut the project on my Cricut Explore Air 2. So that is the basis of what I had to do in design space to get it to the size that suits. However, if your cloche is sort of, you know, about that six and a half, seven inches across, so in diameter, then it would be a suitable um, size just to keep it the way it is. Um, and I definitely recommend for anyone doing this again that they do, um, essentially, it's recommended to use maybe a darker backing instead of the white. But I just made mine white, um, but it's each to their own. Hi, Wendy. So I'm just going to scooch over to here so you can see my hands. Hello. Alrighty. So from here, what we are going to do is we're going to sort of look at what I've got here. So like I said, I've already got things already pre-cut to a degree. Um, and I'm working with a couple of different adhesives. So Wendy said that she's going to have to watch later as it's dinner time in Queensland. No worries, Wendy. It's a very early dinner time. It hasn't even been dinner time in uh, New South Wales for me yet. Alrighty, so what we have here is I've got my pieces. So I ended up with a just a black piece, a darkish grey. Now this grey, I really struggle to find a nice grey sometimes. So this grey here I got out of a Kmart cardstock pack. And then just two pieces of white, which I will layer. And then likewise for the tree, I did get two pieces of white. Now I've already stuck them together. And what I wanted to show to you guys, I don't know if it'll show, but the glue that I use actually creates sort of like um, sticky bits. So it kind of makes it look like cobwebs. Don't know if you can see it. I'll see if I can turn on the light. But you end up with sort of these cobwebs around where the glue streaks. And I was okay with that. I thought I wasn't going to like that. But I feel like I'm okay with that because it will create sort of a cobwebby kind of look on the project so I don't know if you can see it any better but the light catches it a little bit and they kind of create some cobwebby streaks now what I used for this project is um, for everything except for the house I've actually used my Xyron sticker maker so for those who haven't used one of these before you feed your cardstock in here you kind of crank the dial and out the back pops the um, the pieces now these pieces here not the three top pieces but these pieces here all now have an adhesive backing on them so they're all sticky now um, and can be ad adhered without any problem what generally happens and I think you can see it with the I don't even know if you can see it here um, in the see in the, cre the creases here there's a little bit of like webby kind of glue that you can see now that's what I was talking about before but I'm okay with that to stay because um, realistically it's okay for it to look like a cobweb on a Halloween project but if you don't have a Xyron you can just use any kind of tacky glue just to um, you know just to adhere it well and so that you still got that movability so that you can keep them all aligned um, also before I started the so this is the uh, foam the floristry foam that I did use um, from Spotlight I had some I don't even know why I had some in the cupboard um, and what I simply did was I cut it into sort of thin pieces and um, then essentially cut a circle and painted it onto the bottom of the cloche I've cut glued it onto the bottom as well so it stays where it needs to be and the paint that I used was simply just this little bir little birdie home decor collection um, chalk paint which is in a driftwood colour but you can use any brown, it doesn't really matter, um, it will all work for you. Now, the thing that I was saying about my cloche that I wasn't really happy about was this cloche is, it's got that sort of 
I don't know what you would call that reflection, but it's got a different reflection. It's not just a straight through clear glass. So I'm hoping that once it's done and it's on there, when I take photos, it's not going to have that oil slick mark on it. But we'll see how that goes and, you know, when we get to that point. Um, so likewise, I didn't have an ink stamp pad that was a black. So I'm using actually my Posca black pen um, and a little ink dauber so that I can paint on to do it and use that to um, create the designs and the effects that's needed. Um, I picked up some cute little river rocks. Now these river rocks were just in a $2 packet from like your local cheap shop. Um, what have we got here? Paul said, draw around your pieces with a pen after you run them through the Zara before you take off the protective layer, then you remove the excess glue. Yep, I normally do that, Paul, but with this project, I actually want to keep it on. So I actually want it to have that ghosty kind of spooky Halloween-y cobweb feel. So yes, but that's a great tip for anybody else who has it. But for this project, I wanted to keep that there so that if there was anything that got caught in it, it would... Um, it would pick up that effect and it would look kind of spooky. Now, I also picked up some of this. I don't know how to pronounce that. I will never, but it's like a club moss and it's just, you know, I don't have any little trees to put in. So I thought that, you know, this could create some sort of spooky vines and stuff like that. So this is just dried out club moss. I don't know what it is exactly. Picked it up from my local cheap shop, sort of like your um, cheapest chip shop. And likewise, just a couple of rocks as well that could be potentially boulders. I've got them there as well. And some wire. So the wire is for the ghost. So I've got three of them. They're cut to about the six inch mark. Yeah, about six inches. But you can cut them to the length of your desire. I just pre-cut them so I didn't have to fiddle around. Um, so I guess first up what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to adhere. Now I could run this guy through the Xyron, but he's a little bit wide for the Xyron. Um, actually, no, he's probably not, but, you know, I'm going to just tacky glue him. So I'm not as fancy with um, projects with paper as Paul, like I keep telling you guys. So I'm just going to use my tacky glue pen, which is Montmart 1. Anything I do here, it's going to dry clear anyway. Not as precise as Paul. Paul would be like a dot here, a dot there. Because he's um, the paper king. Um, but, you know, I'm, I try. I'd like to think that um, I'm getting better with my knowledge from the king himself. Alrighty, so I'm just going to line up these and the great thing about the tacky glue is that when I line them up I can move them around. I don't have to make sure I get it 100% in place. So it's just about slightly maneuvering them so that they are 100% lined up. And I'm actually going to now add the black so that a black actually goes behind the white pieces so it kind of has a little bit of an effect once on where you'll still be able to see some of the white like as if you're looking inside so i'm going to just glue the back of the white here same fashion same old just giving it a glue pretending i'm paul for the night I don't have his little pick-me-up thing though, so I'm not sure if I need it for this project, but you know, it's something I will invest in. Yep, that looks about good. Um, we've got some comments, so... Oh, yep, everyone's just talking about the Xyron. So I'm just going to pick it up and place it on top of the black. And the reason why I'm doing this part first is and gluing it all together is just so that I can put some weight on it, just so that it dries whilst we're doing the other bits and pieces. Alright, that looks pretty lined up. 
And then all I'm going to do is do the same thing to my grey and just add it to the top. So, it might help if I don't drop everything I have in my hand. Like I told you guys at the beginning, it's not my day today. I think that I'm ready to go to bed and just forget this day happened. But we'll pretend that it's my day just for the now. So lots of glue like Paul does these dots. I'm not fancy. Not saying Paul's fancy, but he's so good. He knows exactly where he wants to put everything and okay, he's a little fancy. He knows what everything's called. <sighs> And like I said, I'm not a paper crafter by, you know, my background, by way of background. But, you know, I like to give everything a go. And I think the reality is, is doing this is showing you guys that anybody can do this stuff. So I think that gives it a really nice, good thickness. So you can still see bits of the white, um, but it is lined up pretty well. And what I'm going to do is I'm just, like I did with my shaker card the other week, is I'm just going to grab... Uh, my little tape dispenser and just sit on top of it just to give it a little bit of um, weight. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull off these now. Like Paul said, you can um, remove the glue so it doesn't stick like this when you pull it off the sheet, but I actually like that it has those cobwebby kind of looks to it because that's, you know, a haunted house and it's going in the street. And I'm just going to stick it on top of all the other pieces I have here. Now, I'm just trying to line up as well as possible. So, you know, like I said, I'm okay with it looking like it's cobwebs because I kind of want that feel, um, just so that it's a little bit creepy. Alrighty, so the next one I'm going to do the exact same thing is with these um, little ghosts. So likewise, I pull my ghost off. I love my nails, but sometimes they get in the way when crafting. Now, once again, I'm okay for them to be a little bit, um, what's the right word, cobwebby. We just line them up. Once again, I'm just doing what I can do with what I have available. And it's very rare that you'd probably get anything Halloween-y out of me. So wish me luck. Uh, Wendy, mine is the Creator Sticker one. So it's this one here. Um, there is a bigger one. This one I think is, I don't even know what width it is. I think it's a three inch width or is it two and a half inches? I can't remember, but doesn't even tell me on the back. I thought it would, but it's just the creator sticker one. I think it was only like a hundred bucks when I purchased it. So, and I think I got it from either Lingcraft or Spotlight. I know that at varying times that they have um, discontinued them and then recontinued them. Um, Kerry says she's never heard of this one. I've had this one a couple of times. I get it, think I'm going to use it heaps, don't use it, throw it out, then I need it. Two inches, yep. Yeah, I will take your word that it's two inches. I think it's two and a half though. Yeah, it's actually probably more like a two and a half incher by the time if you look at this. So it's not as small as two inches, but it's not as big as three. So I think it's two and a half inches. Alrighty, so uh, I've already done the cat just for the purposes, this little scared black cat. It doesn't look black in the camera, but but as you can see, I've just got white on the back because the cloche is to be seen from the one side. If you're wanting to make it so it can be seen from other sides, then maybe just use the black and just duplicate the black three times for the cat. Now, he doesn't look like a cat right now, but he is a cat. Alrighty, so the next part is I'm just going to quickly turn on my hot glue gun. Because this is kind of the fun part is where you get to sort of assemble. And I thought that this would take a lot longer than what it has already. But the assembly, I guess, is probably going to be the hardest part anyway. Whilst that's heating up, 
we're going to talk about how we can um, uh, sort of give some definition and some whatnot colour to the ghost. So I'm just using my Posca paint pen and I'm just drawing onto here. Normally if you've got an ink pad you can sort of ink onto the side but I don't have an ink pad. Um, there's a smaller one that I use for small pieces. Yeah, so this one isn't as small as um, the smallest one, which I think is purple. Um, so what I've got here is I've just drawn onto the end of a dollar. I just got this, you know, pack of three for next to no dollars. And I'm just going to sort of give definition first whilst it's still really inky around the edges. I just don't want to give it too much that it's overdone. So you just kind of want to give it some sort of shadow. So if you see up close, if he focuses, he's got a little bit of the black ink all around him so you can go black you could go any color you want I think that a nice shadow of black works fine so I don't know if that's focusing very well but he's got a bit of shadow and shade to him so that'll look fine for me once again same deal I might just need to add a little bit more ink so, and I chose to not go out and buy any ink as well. I probably could have gone to somewhere like um, Officeworks to get some ink. But at the end of the day, I wanted you guys to sort of see how, um, you know, you can do this stuff with a lot of the stuff you have at home. You don't need to go out and spend a fortune just to um, create these effects with your cardstock. So, bear with me. Once again, you can see here this guy, he's got a little bit of definition to the side of him. And then the small one, obviously because I've made my design smaller, it's a lot harder to work with. The small one, I'm just going to add a little bit more ink. And this is a paint pen, so it's pretty much like painting. However, if you don't have a paint pen, you might have like a black texture. That you can use and you can just put some ink onto a sponge all right so I think that's probably enough for the little guy because he's so tiny but he's gonna do his job now if you want you can um, do the same thing around the edges of the house I'm not going to bother for mine but you can distress the edges of your house or the edges of your tree with brown ink I don't have any brown pet textures around so that isn't going to happen in my house but I think it's a good thing just to sort of see what can be done I uh, just got a bit of ink not ink glue coming out the side here alrighty so I've got my main pieces and how we're going to structure this um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just sort of going to sort of it will be kind of structured similar to how it is in the designs but I'm going to sort of hot glue the back the house to the back of it because I sort of want everything else to sort of be the standout feature um, and simply all I'm going to do is just do a hot glue strip now I don't worry about this too much because I can cover the glue with paint afterwards I could also cover it with things like the rocks so don't stress too much I feel like it's really important that you get it sturdy and I'm just going to pop my head around you guys can see me so I'm just going to hold it there just while the dry it dries it doesn't take long for hot glue to dry so you won't be too long now you could if you want because this is foam um, or you could use styrofoam you could slice it so that it sits inside I didn't want mine sitting inside however I'm just whilst it's sticking there I'm just going to use a rock to prop him up just for the time being now what we might do is see if because the base of the tree is a little bit wonky i'm going to see if we can slice him into the foam 
So we're gonna put the tree sort of here. I'm just gonna dig out a little bit here with my tree control knife. And see how that goes first. Oh, see, that's perfect. I don't even need the glue for that. So, yep, that's my recommendation, slicing into the foam. And the cat, I'm not going to slice him in, I don't think, because I don't think he'll sit very well. I'll just see if I can get him in just slightly. Without digging him in too hard. Uh, what do we got? Lisa has said, what is the brand of your hot glue gun? Uh, my hot glue gun is a Shaw Bonder one. Um, this is the small one. I have the small and the large. And gen it has its dual temp, so it's hot or cold. It generally doesn't um, leak. I've had it turned on for an hour and haven't had it leak before. But then, you know, it depends on the glue sticks that you put in it. It's always going to, no matter what happens with your glue gun, it's always going to be dependent on the glue sticks that you use. Um, the Shaw Bonder ones I've seen available at either um spotlight or lingcraft so i really really like mine um so so far we're looking good let's just see how my house holds up so so far we've got the house sort of situated um so i kind of like that so the rest of it's going to be really just decorating but the first part we want to do is we kind of want to work out how long we need the stems for our ghosts so they can kind of go a couple inches tall so now what I'm going to do to create the stems is um, they can be really anything you like I'm going to actually curl mine out around some you know poly pipe basically just to give it some definition and make it look not super jagged so I just sort of curling it around once it's curled um, I can sort of lengthen it so you can see here it's kind of wispy and I'm just going to straighten it at both ends so that I can glue them onto the backs of the house and everything. So the first thing I'm going to do, and once it's inside, you can revisit that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn my house around. And I'm going to pop, where should I pop the glue? I'm going to pop the glue sort of here. And I'm going to pop my wire in there might help if I can hold it still so I'm just going to hold this sorry not great camera frame right now I keep knocking everything so I'm just going to hold this while the glue dries it doesn't take long for the glue to dry I wish I had a fan in my craft room, it would really help with the drying process. Instead, I'm going to blow on it. That'll be my trick. You can see it's already starting to dry. It's starting to thicken up. And I could probably touch it now, but I don't want to touch it and ruin it. So I'm just, it's just a big glob. Like I said, I don't need anything fancy at the back. And if you were definitely doing this to be seen from front and back, you would probably put a different backing on and wedge the wire in between the two. So it's pretty dry-ish. It hasn't gone like hard, hard dry. But now that it's sort of there, you can kind of tease it to how it's going to be shaped. So I need it to come inland a little bit more. And I want to make sure that it does fit inside my dome without any touching. So I probably need to cut him down a little bit. So we're just going to cut him down so we can fit the ghost. Now, it's not very thick wire, so I can just use scissors. But if you don't have scissors, then obviously you've got different wire cutters that are available. Alrighty, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach some glue to the back of my ghost. Yep, the back of my ghost. And... Likewise, I'm just going to hold them still for a little bit. It's 
feel free to keep asking questions, guys. Sorry, it's not super entertaining. Once it starts to take hold, it'll you'll know because it will stop moving. Won't be too much longer, guys. You can see it's getting cloudier and cloudier. Oh, you can't really see in the camera because the light's on. But it will hold itself pretty much there. So I just want to check it inside the dome. I think the important thing is to keep checking inside the dome to see how high it sits. So that sits pretty good. Now that I know that the this I had to trim down, I'm just going to trim down the other pieces because they have smaller um, ghosts on them. Alrighty, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to save myself because, you know, you learn from your own process. Um, I'm going to just glue on the back and just get them glued first because that will be awkward and hard to manage otherwise. And anybody would have turned around and told me this at the beginning anyway, but, you know, I don't listen. So whilst that's gluing... And adhering, I'm just going to put a little dob on top, make sure it encases it. Alrighty, so I'm just going to pull them to the side so they can dry. I'm going to sort of pull out some of this um, club moss and sort of work out where it can be placed. Good thing about the club moss is that, you know, it's all different shapes and sizes, so you can create um, essentially anything with it and cut it down. You don't need big sizes. has a little bit of pliability, so you can get some great shapes with it. So I think what I might do is just gear myself up to put some... I feel like I'm going to stick some sort of in behind the tree a little. And I have so much here that I can kind of work with whatever size I like. And the great thing about the floristry foam is that you can simply just dab into it and it will stick. So let's go with... Yeah. Oh, let's pull him out for a minute because apparently I can't see what I'm doing. I have so many pieces, I don't know which one I want to work with. Yep, this all looks kind of cute. Um, and then I'll put some in the back once we've done the bits and pieces so really it's all about sort of decorating now with what you have available um, if you have little trees available then you can pop them in as well I don't have any trees which makes it you know it will not turn out exactly like the one in design space because of that so I'm decorating on the fly here so I hope you guys can uh, bear with me this is how I create most of the time. I'm not a planner. Well, I should be a planner, but I'm not. In the meantime, how's everyone been? What have you done today? Hopefully your day was better than mine. Um, no comments, so... Not sure if I'm missing any. No real comments. Alrighty, so I'm just going to now look to gluing 
the other ghost. So I'm probably going to make this guy just a little bit wavy. Um, and I'll cut him off a little bit shorter than what I had. Alrighty, so I'm just going to pop this little guy here. And what I'm going to do is hold it down. Oh, Natalie, you're already at, you need a new glue stick. Of course I didn't bring enough glue stick. Give me two seconds and I'm just going to grab another glue stick. Because every live I forget something. So... It wouldn't be one of my lives if I didn't forget what I was doing or how to do it. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm navigating the maze of my craft room. I'm back with my glue stick. Sorry about that, guys. Um, Janine just looked after her 20-month-old grandson, so she can't so can't craft while he's around. Oh, that's annoying. Well, I mean, it's cute. You get to look after your grandson and you get to spend some really quality time with him but yeah I love looking after my niece and well nieces and nephews but it's that missing craft time thing that I don't like but I love them so it's worth it so I'm just going to hold this here just while it glues Um, Peter got her foil sheets in the post, so she's ready now to try and play with the foil tips. They're super fun and exciting. Sorry, I was too busy watching what you guys were writing to even focus on my hot gluing abilities. And my last little guy, I'm going to make him even smaller. Uh, Janina said he loves watching the cricket work, but then wants to take over. My niece is the same. She would always request to press every button and, you know, for me it was kind of like, oh, not on this one. I know you want to help, but not on this one. So I had to find a happy medium with her where I could um, let her take over certain projects and not others. So it's uh, cute when they try and help. So last ghost here, getting glued down. I'm okay with using all this glue. I'm just going to hold this here for the moment. Be very careful when working with hot glue. You don't want to burn yourself, but so far, so good. And it does, like you can see, it does take a while for them to fully cool down, but this is a good start. Once they're starting to go clear, they'll be fine for you to touch. Um... How's everybody else been? I know there's a couple more of you on. Not just the three of you. So Peter, what is the first project you're going to do with the foil tip, do you reckon? What do you reckon's on your to-do list? For me, it's always a card. So while I'm here, I could probably fill the back with some of this um, club moss. I think for me, the fun part will be to have the bits spiking up around so it looks like a scary forest. And just sort of fill the space a little. Sorry if you can hear any of the noise around my house. We have new neighbours and they keep um, banging gates and things. So whilst this isn't being designed to be seen from every angle 
it would be nice to be able to look pretty from at least the sides and if even if the back is a little bit garish so I'm just going to give it a lot of lovin make sure yep my ghost is pretty set so I'm just popping club moth everywhere first so so far she's looking a pretty scary haunted house I think um what have we got Peter's probably going to do a card but would really like to do something bigger in a frame oh you're going to love what you can do bigger in the frames um Oh no, Erica, I'm so sorry about the pipe under your sink. That is not good. I'm just unplugging. I oh, know I'm going to leave my hot glue gun in just in case I need it again. But yeah, there's nothing worse than, you know, feeling like, you know, you're flustered when all you want to do is come and join us live. So I'm just going to pop some more here. I'm actually going to grab out my Mod Podge. Um, Rosie's ironing. So oh, I'm glad that we make ironing a little bit more bearable for you. I think I might have to start doing that when Paul's live and just watching what he's doing um, whilst he's live. So I'm just adding some Mod Podge here and I'm just going to sprinkle some of the river off. I don't really know how it's very organic right now what I'm doing. So, um, hi Karen. Alrighty, so Paul bought face products today. Trying to try to turn back the clock. Well, you should tell me what products you're using because I probably need some too. So I don't know if these rocks will stick to the Mod Podge. If not, you know, it's only going into a cloche, so it doesn't matter if it sticks forever as long as it stays there nicely to sit on the shelf. Gonna pop in some larger rocks, I think. Little boulders. Um, I keep having to look at it from a different angle just to see if it looks alright. I'm not sure how this is looking. It definitely doesn't look like the original. Um, but you know that's probably a good thing because the original is fantastic. And I can't even hold a match to the you know, the original um, artist, but I could only dare to dream. I'm just going to stick a little rock there, maybe pop one in the middle there, just behind the tree. Wherever this lands, it'll probably be where it stays. So let's just pop this rock on with hot glue. So it's very much just an organic, let's see how it feels. If I had some of the lighter moss, I'd probably sit it um, at the front, but maybe I would like this sort of dusty. I think I kind of like the way it's naturally organic and not too spooky, I guess. Stick this in here. So it's looking all right, guys. Karen said she might have to go making a larger design to put on the front doors to trick or treaters know how to stop. That's good. Liz said that she had a little bit of a mecha spree. Oh, I don't even don't even ask me about makeup and stuff. I don't do that stuff. I don't. I wouldn't even know how to put it on. So I'm just going to add little bits and pieces to it as I find pieces that feel comfortable to work with. I don't want to go over the top too much and I really want to leave it so that in the front it looks super spooky but in the back I'm just going to add more and more just to get that layered effect so it looks like a scary maybe a scary forest in the back.
Oh, no worries, Karen, that you will be able to watch it on replay when it's finished and it's done its loading thing. But maybe next time, especially for calls, you'll want to keep it. Just um, maybe put a reminder in your phone that would might help you a little bit. So I'm just going to pop another rock off to the side. And then I think I'm actually quite happy with how it's turned out. I don't want to overdo it, like I said, um, because it might just ruin the design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot back to my main camera so you can see it from the front so I don't have to turn it upside down. So I'm over here creating a mess over here. Um, but before I put the dome lid on, this is my creation. So it kind of looks a little bit spooky. Um, I might see if I can put something behind it so you can see a little bit better. Hopefully that helps. I can't see now what I'm talking about. So it's a little bit spooky. I'll take some really good photos um, once it's done. And in the dome, I think on the dome you might not be able to see much. Let me see if I can put the dome on. So in the dome, it probably doesn't look as scary because of the shine, but I'll get some better photos without the light on it. Um, so, I mean, it's all about working with what you've got. Like in these things that I've purchased for, it only costs like a couple of dollars, but I'll have, I'll be able to make as many haunted houses as I can with what's left over. Um, so thank you everybody for your patience and everything. I will take some nice photos and upload it so you can definitely see how great it looks. Um, and perhaps if I get a better uh, dome that doesn't have that sort of oil slick look to it. Um, yeah, Paul, the moss stuff was just called Club Moss. So it was just from a cheap shop. Uh, it was $3.99. Sorry, it wasn't $2, but pretty much next to nothing. So I thought it looked really, really great. Um, I also wanted to just talk to you guys before I uh, get on about what the fabulous Paul's going to be doing, you know, in all of his lives because he's um, amazing and has more time than me to do anything. Um, I kind of just wanted to quickly talk to you guys. Um, I don't know if any of you guys follow me on Nat's Crafty Life, um, but I'm currently in the process of doing a raffle for this tumbler this breast cancer tumbler just says kiss goodbye to breast cancer it's a 20 ounce tumbler and the full proceeds of the raffle will be going to um to charity i've put all the details of the charity in my post on nat's crafty life so um it's i can't even remember what the society is called but it's one of the breast cancer societies that um they actually came door knocking the other day to my house and i thought you know what that's what i could do um, so it's two dollars a ticket, and um, full proceeds, every dollar spent on a ticket, will go, get donated, and then I'll put my little bit in at the end as well. So if anyone's interested, just send me a message on my page or on my prep, personal page, and you could go into the draw to win a twenty ounce tumbler. It's probably worth about fifty bucks, um, but it could be yours for two dollars. As simple as two dollars. Um, and of course, that's in, you know, solidarity with the whole Breast Cancer Awareness Month and the fact that, you know, there are a lot of people out there that are touched by cancer and, and not just breast cancer alone, but, you know, for those that have, it is very dear to their heart. I don't really get a little emotional, um, but it is definitely a great cause. Um, and then meanwhile, like I said, I'll take some great photos and post them on the socials um, on my Instagram. So at Nat's Crafty Life on Instagram, and that will flow through to my Facebook page as well. I'll also give um, a show in Cricket for Australians, just so in case anybody isn't following me. But if you're not following me, you should be. Um, and make sure you also follow Paul on Instagram and Facebook as well. So on Instagram, he is at Scissors Paper Paul, um, and then simply Scissors Paper Paul in Facebook as well. So, um, yes, it is a Nat's Crafty Life original. <laughs> So uh, next week, Paul is um, up live for his 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time tutorial for Cricket for Australians. He will be doing, and I'm really excited to see these ones. He gave me a little like rundown of what it might be, but I just can't wait to see it reimagined. 
Um, he's going to do an 80s inspired coaster. So he's going to use a couple of different um, mediums and a couple of different techniques. Now, I don't know if he wants to tell everybody what it is or whether you just have to wait for his little um, sneak announcement when he posts about it. But it will be an 80s themed or 80s inspired coasters. So um, that will be very interesting to see. Um, and so that's going to be 7 p.m. So same time next week on Thursday, unless he's sick again. <laughs> um, but it will be um, on his YouTube channel. So if you're not already subscribing to my YouTube channel and ringing the bell and everything Paul tells you to do, then you also need to go over and find Scissors Paper Paul, ring his bell, subscribe to his channel, turn on every notification um, so that you don't miss 7 o'clock next week. That's right, I'm talking to you guys in Queensland who forget about daylight savings. So, the other thing is, is Paul is so amazing and every Sunday he also goes live just off the goodness of his own heart. He doesn't have to do it. It's not part of Cricket for Australians, like it's not in our list of tutorials, but whatever he's currently making, he goes live and has a chat with you guys. Um, so at 11 o'clock on Sunday, that's Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time, he will be making a personalised rainbow name sign. Sorry. Yeah, that's it. That's what it was called. Um, so he's going to be working with some great blanks that have been um, supplied. He's going to, I'm sure he's probably going to be making something for his new little niece. That's Well, she's not new yet because she hasn't been born. But his soon-to-be new little niece. Um, so it's going to be really cute. You know that's what's going to happen. You know it's going to be exciting. Make sure you go and follow Paul. Make sure you follow me on all of our socials. If you're not already part of Cricket for Australians, make sure you jump over and join the group and also follow us on Instagram as well. So that's just at Cricket for Australians. And um, yeah, Paul's uh, blaming the man flu. I'm glad everyone's excited about the 80s. Very exciting. Um, but yeah, so Paul's going to be live just to recap. 11 a.m. Sunday and 7 p.m. Thursday, Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. So that's, I think, 6 o'clock for Queensland and 4 o'clock for, uh, for WA. Um, but yes, definitely, yeah, she's definitely cooking still. Definitely, definitely ring those bells, subscribe to us, like us, give us a thumbs up, tell us what you want to see. And um, I will see you in probably two weeks' time. Anyway, guys, it was lovely catching up with you all, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye.